thousands of people have lost their lives trying to cross the Texas border into the United States. DPS tweeting this photo of Marine units recovering a body in the Rio Grande and Eagle Pass this afternoon. Here are the facts. The agency says 2,300 undocumented immigrants have died in the past three years from drownings, heat exhaustion, vehicle accidents, other hazardous conditions associated with illegally crossing the border. Now, the situation remaining front and center in Washington, D.C., as the House and the Senate debate whether or not to tie border funding to aid for Ukraine and Israel. ABC 13's Tom Abrams traveled to the border where he spoke with border agents and congressional leaders about how to fix this broken system. He joined us live tonight in McAllen. Hey, Tom. Hi, Brianna. Good evening from the border. We traveled here to South Texas along with a bipartisan congressional delegation to get a first-hand look at this ongoing crisis. Our tour brought us to the wall, where a group of 22 migrants turned themselves in. They were a mix of men, women, and young children. The youngest was 16 months old. Yeah, 16 months old in his pajamas. Once the migrants are finished here at the wall, they'll be put on this bus, all of them taken to one of several processing centers. From there, if they're seeking asylum under the current policy, they'll then be released. It's a process that plays out again and again throughout the night, every night, and into the morning. Evidence of illegal crossings litter border towns all along the 1,254 miles where Texas meets Mexico. In November, in Texas alone, there were more than 111,000 encounters between migrants and Customs and Border Protection. They come from Central and South America, China, Russia, and the Middle East. Chris Cabrera is a longtime Border Patrol agent who is with the National Union. He gave us a tour and his perspective on what's wrong. It's like if your sink is overflowing, are you going to turn off the water or are you going to mop? That is why a bipartisan congressional delegation is here. We won't go file this charge if you win to go back to Mexico. So Led by the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall. I think it's important when we talk about national security that we do so with as one voice, one nation, when we can. I think this hurts the entire country, the fabric of this nation. Uh, it's a human tragedy. Let's go. Hi there, how are you? He's joined by Monica De La Cruz, a first-term congresswoman who represents this district, but who looks at the bigger picture. But at the end of the day, this is an American issue, and it affects all Americans from Brownsville, McAllen, Texas, to New York City. The lone Democrat, Henry Cuellar, he says the rest of the country is beginning to see what border towns have known for years. People say, hey, it's okay, let the migrants in, but once you're in your own backyard, it changes things. That's why New York, Chicago, uh, D.C. and other places are saying, wait, wait, we can't handle that because when they're seeing this 1,500 miles away, it's very different. And Randy Weber, a Republican who is hoping Congress finally acts. I think the American people are waking up. From here, the delegation travels to Mexico City seeking help in stopping the flow of migrants before they ever get to the border. And of course, one of the biggest concerns is asylum and the way the United States currently applies that law. Just this last week, the Biden administration indicated that they're looking at changing asylum here, hoping to stem the tide of undocumented migrants. Reporting live in McAllen tonight, Tom Abrams, ABC 13 Eyewitness News.